That's pretty hot. I like the ass. Yeah. I like that. That's pretty hot. How much is that? Like 200k maybe? Holy shit. Hey guys, it's Ricer Boy. I kind of got lost somewhere in the US and I'm here with Mike. Mike J Autos and stuff. If you haven't already subscribed to him, you probably should. We found a supercar dealership. So now we're just gonna walk around and look at cars we can't afford because that's what we're doing right now. So I'll admit guys, I'm not that much of a supercar head, even though I know some things about these cars. But after finding this dealership, it seemed like a great opportunity to stop by and give some opinions about these really expensive cars. This is obviously a new Ferrari 488 GTB. This is the uh, new Portofino, the California replacement. And that is a BMW Z8, which I actually like more than nearly everything else I've seen here so far. This thing actually has a manual transmission and a BMW M5 power plant. And you can understand why they cost so much. This is a Ferrari 430 Scuderia. They're not really that common, and that's part of why they're so cool. But guys, so far everything I've looked at here is over $200,000. And there's cars that I'm looking at right now, they make less than 500 of them. This is a Ferrari 458 Aperta. So it's like a 458, except it has like more power and uh, cool vents on it and stuff. I mean, it looks nice. I can never afford anything that's here though. You know, Maserati's a really interesting brand because even for rich people, they still look down on people who get Maseratis because you know, they're made by Fiat Chrysler. And this new Levante just, yeah, I don't like the way it looks too much. So this is the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso, which I think is like a really overly long and stupid name for what's like a hatchback coupe or shooting brake. It's actually really cool, you know, you could get it with like a turbo V8 or 12 cylinder. You actually fit golf clubs in the back. There's like four seats. I mean, I'd never be able to afford any of these cars. And to be honest, like supercars are kind of like overhyped and everything. It's just all part of the clickbait problem that we have. But, you know, this is something that's actually practical. Yeah, this is an F12. People say it looks like a C7 Corvette. And let's go to the front of it. And uh, yeah, it actually does. Wow. I'll be honest, most people are excited by supercars like this. Like, this is a 458 right here. People say this is like a piece of art. It looks nice, it's fast, mid-engine. Definitely a really cool car. But I don't feel anything, because I know I won't be able to afford one. See over there, you can see how it's evolved over time. The yellow one's a 360 Modena. That one over there is a California. Then there's a 430 and then a 458. And then there is a 430 that just went by on the, uh, on the road over there. If you've owned one of these two trucks before, you've probably talked to your doctor about ED. This is a new BMW M5. It's really quick. It's big. It has room for your family. And it only comes with an automatic transmission. You know, it looks pretty nice. But at the same time, it still looks like an old man sedan. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Just because it has a good 0-60 to 60 doesn't mean it can do everything. This is an Audi R8 V10. Basically everyone who's ever reviewed one of these says, Oh, it's like a supercar except nobody notices. Here's the real truth. Everybody notices because it is still a supercar and it is basically a rebadged Lamborghini Huracan and since it's cheaper, you should buy one because a Lamborghini Huracan uses the exact same stuff as that. This is a McLaren 650S and it's cool because it's different. It has one windshield wiper and it's orange. This is a McLaren 570 GT. It's cool because it actually has cargo room, it has a really cool rear wing, and it's unique. I can't lie, if you think about how much McLaren has progressed in the last couple years compared to other supercar manufacturers, they've really done a lot. I mean, they used to make that thing next to it where the rear end looks like a bunch of shutters to a closet, but now they make that? It felt like just yesterday when Bentleys like this were actually brand new models, but when you look at it today, it looks really stodgy. Like, it's really long, the wheels are kind of small. I mean, if you want a luxurious car and you want it used, you can buy one of these. But remember that they're built by Volkswagen, and it'll break every time you so much as breathe on it. And it's the same thing when it comes to this ridiculous clown car in front of me that was probably used in a rap video at some point. It's interesting because there's a literal problem in the used car market 
where there are people that find broken Bentley Continentals and Rolls Royces and no one will buy them because the computer problems in them are so huge that even if you can afford the 30k car, it has hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in repairs. I mean, they've literally made it impossible for these cars to work on a used market. This is a McLaren 720S. It's cool because it's different. And this is actually a really nice yellow color. I mean, once again, compared to what McLaren used to make, this is a really neat car. I'm not even that much into supercars and I know I could never afford one of them, but this is something that actually looks different. That's like a Bentley Continental, except it's a sedan. This is like a Bentley Continental, except it's an SUV. This is a Lambo Aventador SV. This is like getting a Lamborghini Aventador, turning it up to 11, giving it as much performance as possible. It has a V12 engine, so it sounds really nice. But when you think about how much it costs, wouldn't a house actually be a better investment? I might be hating on this car in the video, but you know, when it has that much carbon fiber at the rear end, and uh, those exhaust tips, I think that this is actually pretty freaking sexy. This is a new Lamborghini Huracan Performante. This is like a Huracan, except it has more horsepower and has a carbon fiber rear wing. I mean, everyone has said this before that the Huracan is the most conservative looking Lamborghini, but uh, this thing looks really nice and having the exhaust that high up is actually really unique. And I just realized that the biggest downfall to this car, or something that might be deliberate, is that the exhaust pipe is just at the right height where someone can stick their pe- in there. Ignoring that terrifying imagery, this is a new base Huracan called the Evo. I mean, it still looks really cool, has a nice diffuser and that exhaust that's mounted up there, but I mean, really, I could never afford this. And like I said earlier, if you're getting one of these, buy an Audi R8 that's over there. Oh, hey, look, this thing's a rebadged Audi Q7. No, I'm actually serious. This is a Lamborghini SUV, which is literally just a rebadged Audi Q7 with big brakes. Also, this thing has a fake vent on it. That vent does not go anywhere. People might say that they like this Lamborghini SUV, and it looks pretty good as an SUV, but if you want something that's an actual performance car, look at the difference between this thing and an actual Lamborghini right next to it. The only reason why that vehicle exists is because Lamborghini has to exist, and they do that by rebadging an Audi SUV and selling it to people who don't know any better. What is the auto industry coming to? Hey look, it's the Lamborghini that everyone and their grandma owns. Do you know that the doors on this thing open up? That's actually pretty neat. Hey look, it's a BMW M5 except it's a Mercedes. Also, if you want to be angry, the original reason why the Mercedes E63 was called that was because the engine displaced 6.3 liters. 6.363 makes sense, right? Well, the new one has a 4 liter twin turbocharged V8. So yeah, it makes more horsepower. And Mercedes says that because it makes 603 horsepower, the 63 nomenclature still makes sense. Well, at least it would if it made 630 horsepower. The real truth is that if they called it the E40 AMG, people would wonder why it has a smaller number. So nowadays, numbers and car names don't even make any sense. Let that sink in. This one's an SUV with a big engine in it, so if your wife says no to everything else, you can buy this one. New Aston Martin Vantage. People say that this is a controversial car, but I think what's most important to an Aston Martin, what always has been, is the looks. And even though it's controversial, I think it looks good. The only thing is that if you have a close eye, look at the rear bumper. Because of our US regulations, we got those little boobs back there. I hope that someone figures out a way to take them off, because otherwise, this is a beautiful car that James Bond would drive himself. And since this is a BMW M4, that means I've finally gotten to the end of looking at all the supercars that I saw at this dealership. And that's made me think a lot more about how I think about supercars and expensive luxury cars in general. So guys, this is a Ferrari 599, and that's already a pretty special car because it has a V12. However, this one has a manual transmission. If I'm right, I think this means it's one of about 40 cars. So this is a 2001 Ferrari 550. Already a pretty nice car, a good start, great condition, but manual transmission. And this is the new thing that they got to replace the F12, the 812 Superfast, which is a uh, not really good name, but it's a really good looking car. So as it turns out, this dealership has an actual auto museum inside of it. This is something I have never, ever, ever seen before. Check this out. Pretty 
pretty cool cars. I might not know the most about race cars, like those NASCARs over there, or everything that's over here, or the pace cars and Indy 500 cars. But this is a really cool little museum that I never knew existed. It's amazing everything they used to do with race cars in order to get them faster and faster. That yellow one is a forged race car. And this one apparently is the first one to go 200 miles an hour at something, which is why it has that giant turbocharger there and Cosworth on the cylinder head. And we have another two Indy 500 winning cars right over here. It's crazy to think that this is all inside of a dealership. I don't know if you guys know what this is, but it's a Lamborghini Aventador that has nostrils on it. And unlike some of the other cars I've seen today, I can't act like I'm too good for it that this thing isn't cool. Because this is a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, which makes a lot of horsepower out of the last V12 we're ever going to see in a Lamborghini. It's got the exhaust right there, a ridiculous diffuser, and an upper green lap record. And this room that you see right here is how you find the options for your own personal Lamborghini. You get to go through everything in person in this nice little boardroom in order to figure out how you want to design your car when you're paying that much for it. I don't know how else to say it guys, but this place is crazy. This entire dealership is owned by Penske, the oil company, and they own the museum that's in here, a restaurant that's in here, everything. And it just shows that if you have enough money to buy a really expensive car, you get a full service experience. I've seen some cars here that I've never seen before anywhere else, and I could only imagine what it would be like to have one of those cars and get to wait out here with this sort of view whenever you're getting your car out for service. So Mike, after seeing all the supercars in there in the Penske Racing Museum, what do you think about cars this expensive? Well, for one, I can never afford something like that. Um, and if I was able to afford something like that, I probably would not buy something like that. And knowing me, if I could afford something like that, I probably will just to let it sit and have one and say I own a Ferrari. But let me tell you, those Lambos, it sure changed my opinion about them. I think I like them more than the Ferraris. And I never liked Lambos because they were just too Mickey Mouse looking. But from what I saw, they're awesome. A Corvette is more practical than a Ferrari. But if you're at the level where you can afford Ferrari, that is more actually a, a practical car than a Lambo, especially when they're $700,000. So we got to see a pretty cool dealership, a ton of supercars, and an Aventador SVJ. And that is what I consider a pretty good day out here in Phoenix. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and peace out.